long, long line of actors and was apparently given singing, dancing and elocution lessons almost as soon as she could walk and talk. Although she's extremely well known for her stage work, she made her international reputation in the American soap dynasty as a somewhat evil sister of Joan Collins. Well, she's just one of those people who never seems to stop working and even runs her own theatre company. Well, currently she's touring with a production based on the classic Ealing comedy, which is called Passport to Pimlico. And we're delighted to welcome to the house Kate O'Mara. <laughs> Go this way, Kate. Oh, it's a bit of a cross, okay. Well, looking wonderful and trim as always, <laughs> Kate, I have to say. Well, a bit exhausted like because of this. You like the boots? I yeah. Do. And like I brought the, the legs. And you um, brought the I brought legs. legs. Eric Morecambe's phrase. <laughs> when you first saw my legs, you said, you brought the legs, I see. <laughs> so, so I do when I can. You know? <laughs> I'd love to see the atmosphere or feel the atmosphere backstage as you're flitting between two characters it's in this play. completely hectic. Everybody is playing different parts. There's um, only eight of us in the cast and there's 46 parts. Um, I play four, two main ones, and fill in round the edges. Ian Lavender, who's my co-star, only has to play one, so he remains cool and collected throughout. <laughs> the rest of us are like demented flies. We, it's, it's just unbelievable. I play um, a very raunchy sort of East Ender character at one of the times, you know, sort of um, quite a sort of nice, um, sexy sort of lady, but she's, she's a bit sort of common, you know. <laughs> and, uh, excuse me. That's right, that's me. And, uh, and then the other one is um, uh, a professor of history who is frightfully like that and one of the chaps, you know. <laughs> and, that's me. <laughs> so it's, it's good fun, but I have to play them swapping between scene and scene. I do one, then I change out that and I come on as the other. So the wigs are flying all over the place, uh, yes, are they? Yes, all over. It's like Tommy Cooper, you know, on and off with, with, with the hats or the wigs. It's very funny. And presumably, the, does the voice come automatically just with the character? Oh, yes, you're flitting yes. Between People voices. often say that. They say, how do, you, how do you not get them mixed up? But of course you can't, possibly. Um, because the, the character and, and the makeup, I have to take off my lipstick, obviously, for, for the Professor, and I have to put it back on again for Edie because she's sort of quite, quite sort of glamorous. Edie is, and uh, and it's 1947, so of course you have to wear a lot of lipstick. And and you know, I get on stage, and I think. I do hope I've taken my lipstick off <laughs> because, you know, it's so quick. I thought, I would it be embarrassing if I hadn't? And you... Are you doing all the side stage? Yes, Oh, in much the to the chagrin of all the people around and about. <laughs> in the dark, you see. That's, that, that's I'll say that, Kate and Mara, she's always taking her clothes off. <laughs> 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 I'd like to talk about your childhood just um, a little bit. That was a long time ago, Gloria. <laughs> I know, no, not that long ago. Because actually, it's fascinating, you know, when I think when people are brought up with this long tradition of theatre, yeah. and I think you were carted around, weren't you, from yes. theatre to theatre? Oh, I went to so many different schools. I had a very good education, as a matter of fact, but um, my mother was an actress, and so I'm, I'm, there's six generations of us now. And uh, she literally made my sister and I do scenes from Shakespeare when we could barely walk, you know. We didn't know what we were talking about. We just did it because she told <laughs> us to. And we gave concerts. We were given, um, you know, elocution lessons, um, singing, dancing, playing the piano, everything. Did you like it or did you just no, have to loved do it. it? Absolutely loved it, yes. Um, actually, I was quite inhibited as a child and I think it sort of brought one out of oneself and um, I, I try to do that when I'm doing my school's workshops because I think it's, it's a good thing for young people. I'm doing a, a youth theatre uh, workshop in the summer in my hometown of, well not my hometown, it's where I live actually at the moment, in Taunton and um, it brings young people out. It's, it's, it, it makes, gives them confidence I think to, to cope, especially if they're shy and uh, I, I like to do that. I think it's good for them. Nevertheless, as the story goes, you know, lots of schools, you know, d mm. different um, set of friends every other year, whatever the case may be, boarding school even yeah. staying in boarding school sometimes at Christmas yes so what effect did all of that have made me very independent and and quite determined to prove myself I, I suppose not consciously I didn't think my parents were neglecting me because they weren't they they obviously loved me but I never saw them but even at even at Christmas you yeah, well, they were neglecting just ha it you. happened that my my father was in the RAF miles away and my mother was touring with something and so I, I had to stay at boarding school for Christmas but but the thing was that I had the place to myself so I thought it was quite a treat you see and I was allowed to the free run of the grounds and everything and uh, it never occurred to me that I was at all deprived I I, I felt very sort of special and uh, so I think it's made me very very independent and also um, I was determined to prove myself. I think I'm all right, you must love me. You know? yeah. <laughs> and so but at any time did a bit of resentment set in? 
Um, no, only latterly, in hindsight, have I noticed that perhaps it probably affected me and made me very ambitious and perhaps a bit hard. And I think that's probably why I played so many villainesses, because um, <laughs> it's, I had a tough exterior. Um, which I'm actually a very nice person, as you well know. I and do. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but I, I have this rather sort of abrasive manner and a rather clipped speaking voice, and I'm sure that's why it's come about. Mind you, stood you in good stead and dynasty, didn't it? <laughs> Just paint the scene for me now. How did that all come about? Well, I actually tested for the Colbys, believe it or not. You see, the thing is, Joan had made an enormous success mm. of, of, of her part in, in, in Dynasty, as of course we all had to call it. Um, and um, the, so they thought we must get another British actress. Obviously, this is the thing. And so they decided to do a spin off called The Colbys. And what I didn't realize at the time was that there were 60 women of uncertain age <laughs> testing uh, for, this, for, the, for the Colbys, for the two sisters and the Colbys. And I was one of them. And they whittled us down to the last eight. And, uh, and then, then to the last two, and Stephanie Beecham and I were, were the two. But in fact, um, Steffi went into the Colbys, and then I was actually in a West End play. I couldn't, I couldn't go. They wanted me to go. You were playing hard go. to get at that stage. Yes, well, I mean, I, I usually try to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it makes people appreciate it. So what more. were you saying? Um, no, I can't go until I finish my play. Well, I had to, because I'd, after all, I'd signed a contract. I was at the Old Vic playing a very nice part, thank you very much. And uh, they, were, they couldn't believe it. They rang me up in the middle of the night. Well, of course, it's not to them. It was the middle of the day for them, but to us it was the middle <laughs> of the night. And said, but Katie, uh, you know, this is your chance of international stardom. <laughs> and um, I said, well, I can't help that. I'm, I'm doing this play. So I didn't get into the Colbys. Um, they put me into Dynasty. They ha hung on for me and, and put me in as Joan's sister instead, which actually I think was a better deal, in fact. And, and I hear there was a bit of a four-act play going on there anyway, because they wanted somebody, didn't they, to threaten Joan a well, little bit? Well, yes. I, I was told that, you know, possibly um, she wanted too much money or wanted more <laughs> money than they were prepared to pay. And uh, she was enormously successful in it. And so they thought that if they got a um, a slightly younger, because I'm only slightly younger than Joan, um, uh, actress in, as a sort of threat that she might toe the line. And whether that's actually what happened, I don't know. But I, it made me feel pretty uncomfortable, you know. <laughs> I have to say, the fact that I lasted two years is, is, says something for my tenacity, I think, which obviously stems from my childhood. Well, you had many scenes with John Forsyth, and here is one. What about me? I always used to think, live your life fairly, be honest with everyone, that's all it takes. Blake. I didn't kill anybody, but I was accused of it and convicted. I lost five years of my life. Now, somehow, I am going to be paid back for what I lost. If it's money you need, then I'll help you. Ben is the one who should be helping, not you. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, we like that. <laughs> Did you see the hair? Oh, the yeah. hair. It's right out here somewhere. Wonderful. I mean, you know, one just doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> doesn't it? And the shoulders the and everything. The shoulder pads yes. and the hairspray, yeah. fantastic. And, and I gather, I mean, as long as you really like look good and knew your lines, that you were just straight in there. As long as you look good. I don't think they even minded if you didn't know your lines. <laughs> but the important thing was to look good. And it was a hell of a strain, let me tell you. <laughs> how, how long were you in it in the end? Um, over I, for two years, I, I, I was in it, which was two series, actually. Two series. Well, yeah. it was good. It was great for the career. Oh, it's wonderful. It was good a for the Shot Balance. in the arm, and also it enabled me to come back. I came back to do King Lear. You know, you could hardly mm. get, well. I mean, it's still melodrama, I suppose. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, it was. Uh, it, it, no, it was very good for my career. So, with Passport to Pimlico, now you're in Reading this week, and yes. then where do you shoot off to? Uh, after we then that? sort of do the East Anglian dates. We do sort of Lincoln and Bury St Edmunds, and um, then we go down to South End. Then we go up to Crewe, and then Brighton, and then Nottingham, and that's that's it then. Well, come back and see us another day because oh, I'd love there's to. so many. I'll tell you what I'd really love to talk to you about: um, the way you take a lot of drama into the schools and what's mm. happening in there at the moment. So, yeah. come back on an educational day. Please, I'd love to. That'd be thank lovely. You. Kate Amara, thank you very thank much. You lovely very to see much. you. <laughs> After the break, we'll be trying to be politically correct in the House. Uh, as a point of interest, uh, I, I do worry about the whole PC thing in it, terms of words. I think it can get a little tedious, I have to say. I mean, I have to think of myself now as an actor instead of an actress, and that comes hard after all these Would years. Would that bother you? Uh, no, but I think it can be taken too far. I think to lose the word semstress or seamstress, how you like to pronounce it, is a pity. It's such a nice old-fashioned word and have to be... I don't know what they're called instead, mind you. Somebody, you know, somebody who sews, I suppose. That's the point. What other sew, word do we go to a, use? A sewing person? Is that what Someone who sews, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, we'll find out after the break, so stay with us. That's lovely, Kate. <laughs> Imagine hitting.
Hitchcock's Strangers on a Train, but with women instead of men. Jacqueline Bissett and Teresa Russell are plotting murder tonight at 9 on 5. My friend, Babs. Oh, my yeah. friend, Babs. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Lovely. this is our last show before we take our oh. summer break. You're all supposed to go, oh. oh. But let's face it, could we have a better guest than Babs oh, Windsor to end on? Yeah. I'm very privileged to be here. <laughs> I've just done a stint, a lunchtime stint at the Vic. Are you good at yeah. lunchtime stints? I'm very good, you know. <laughs> And they all send their love to you. I tell you what, this is like the blonde show today. Uh, man, I'm real. Mine's real. Aren't I? Uh, yeah, yeah. And don't we have more fun? Listen, not we do. Yes, I tell you what, I, I, I haven't seen my colour since I was 17. My proper colour. Same as me. I don't even remember 17. I mean, goodness me, 17. Oh, I want to okay. tell you that apart from Babs, we've got just a great star lineup. We've also got David Soul. Oh! Yes! Oh! Did yes. I did, yes. And I'm happy to say that I know the gentleman quite well. <laughs> Did you fancy him when he was in Always. Huh? Oh, it was always him, the blonde mm. one. Oh, he was yes. the one for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, wasn't he? <laughs> I hate to tell you, he's got his girlfriend with him today. I see. And his son. <laughs> Has he brought the dog? <laughs> he's brought the dog. <laughs> yes, he's Jackie. And lovely he's got his best friend, whom I know you know, Stefan Dennis. Oh, he, oh he's lovely. Yes, yeah, so from Ramsey. So, do you remember oh, Stephanie? He was there for seven and a half years. Oh, Fantastic. Can't wait. So, it's a what great a lineup. lineup. It's oh, a great it's show. Great. But we're going to start off with Babs Windsor. Will we have a seat? Can I have a seat? <laughs> 